Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 7 of my Football Manager 24 save with Bradford City. If you do go on to enjoy today's video, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try and hit 20 likes on today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new. We are now on the road to 2,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so, and it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below. Now today, it is the big decider. We'll Will we be staying in League 2 or will we be able to achieve promotion up into League 1? It is very, very tight at the top of the table. Our recent form has been terrible. We've only picked up one point out of our last possible nine available, which is obviously not good. It's seen us drop down into the playoff places, but let's waste no further time. Make sure to drop a like on there for me and subscribe if you are new and let's get into it. So since you were last with us then, we had a 3-1 win at home to Tranmere Rovers, a 1-0 draw away at Grimsby Town, a 2-1 defeat at home to Gillingham FC and a 3-0 defeat away at Salford. We then played a friendly in between just to give some of the youngsters and some fringe players some game time. But in today's episode then, we have Walsall FC away, who are currently 16th in the table, and then Newport County at home, who are currently 13th in the the table so ideally in terms of fixtures two teams on paper who you want to be playing they're both mid-table have nothing to play for our recent form though has seen a slip down into fifth in the table with three points away from the automatic promotion places our recent form has absolutely messed us up really between now and the end of the campaign it all depends how we're going to finish the season on them last couple of matches. Fingers crossed though, with me closing the game and opening it back up again. Since that port run of form, we're now going to go on a good run, win our last two games and end today's episode in League One. But who knows? Here we have it then. Here's how we line up for the first game of today's episode and the penultimate one of season one. In goal, we've got Sam Walker with a back three of JT, Kelly and Walsh. We've Swanson and Richards as the wing backs. Gilead and Evans in the midfield with a front three of Young in behind Cassidy and Cook, who apparently don't particularly play well together. Maybe we should start Kavanagh instead then if Cassidy and Cook are not getting along and Cook is obviously the better of the two. Callum Kavanagh is going to get the start instead. A real last minute change of plans there. On the bench then we've got Doyle, Halliday, Platt, Smallwood, Patterson, Poynton and Cassidy. I'm not going to lie to you, Poynton's return to Bradford City has been massively underwhelming. He got two assists in a single game, six starts, seven sub appearances and he has been poor on the whole, which I'm massively disappointed with. I'm obviously going to give him a new contract at some point as well. Kind of all depends on what division we're in next season, how long that contract is. But let's get into the first game of today's episode. We need two wins, basically. Anything less than two wins will probably not see us finish in the playoffs. Former Bantams, Joe Ryan and Aramide Ote both start today at Fort the Saddlers. I didn't actually see there who their manager is. I wonder if it is still Matt Sadler. I think it's always bizarre that the Saddlers have got a manager called Matt Sadler and don't they have like a director or something with an, an, another Sadler? It's yeah, really, really baffling. But we are now underway for today's game. They're playing the exact same formation as us and an early goal would definitely settle the nerves. Callum Kavanagh has unfortunately headed over the bar, but it's a positive start from us. Great cross into the box there from Lewis Richards. I also forgot to mention as well, you might have briefly seen it when we were looking at the starting eleven that Billy Sharp has, I think, torn his tendon in his Achilles or something like that. So he's out for seven months and he's now seriously considering retiring. So he could go down as one of the best signings in the club history if he does actually end up retiring. Richards, ball in here, looking for Callum Kavanagh, open goal. Again, heads over the bow. We've had some good chances in this first seven minutes, unfortunately, being able, unable to convert so far. And now we've got a corner kick. Lewis Richards swings the ball into the box, looking for Evans and it nearly falls there. Oh, wow, we've got a penalty. I'm not too sure what we've got the penalty for, but Andy Cook is going to take it. He's only missed one all season and it came back off the post against his former club. Andy Cook steps up and he's hit the post again. And that's exactly how he hit the post with his other penalty miss. He opened up his body and it bounced back off the post. That's the second time this season Andy Cook has missed a penalty. In real life, he missed quite a few. Because in the previous season, he didn't miss a single one. 20 minutes on the clock then, still nil-nil. We've definitely been the better side. I didn't really see what the penalty was for, so I can't complain too much. But still massively disappointing that Andy Cook has once again been unable to convert. It looks like at the moment, a lot of the teams above us are just drawing. So... If we score, I mean, to be fair, MK Dons and Salford must be losing. Oh, Salford have now just scored. Brilliant. Approaching the halftime mark, my maths is not particularly great. So I would say for the large part, just ignore me. I'm thrashing the arms. Not good enough. Everyone is motivated apart from Walsh. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Aramide Ote subbed off at halftime for the Saddlers. And they are picking up a number of bookings 
they got three to their name so far. If nothing's changed in the next five minutes or so, we're going to make some more substitutions. I say some more, we've not made any yet, but we've now got an hour on the clock. We're not particularly performing well. Let's now make some changes. I'm thinking about maybe going to a back four. I'm going to bring Walsh off, get Cassidy on, I'm going to go to a 424, I think. So this is what that will look like. I do also just want to bring Alex Patterson on for Alex Gilead and play him as an attacking Mazzal. And we're just going to throw a couple more bodies further up the pitch. Centre back off, striker on. We're going for it. We need the win. Newport have also equalised with Salford and Harry get a equalised with MK Dons. If we score, we're in a very, very good position. Andy Cook missing that penalty. Could that be the difference between League 2 and League 1 come the end of the campaign? Nothing is really happening. We're going to chuck just some more attack on Jake Young's going to come off for Bobby Poynton over on that right hand side Halliday is going to come on for Zach Swanson at right back and we'll save our final change for now and hope that we score and then we can bring Cook off for Matty Platt and just try and defend but who really knows can we have some late drama here it was a very entertaining game in real life this one on the whole has been a pretty boring one you don't want a nil nil if it finishes like this we're definitely in the playoffs we need to score I think I've just seen their MK Dons have taken the lead unfortunately Walsall have a free kick here We've got five players in the wall and not too many in the box. They're certainly outnumbering us in the box. It'll be friend to take this free kick. He's taking quite a long time to take it. He hits it off the post, cleared away by Bobby Poynton. Andy Cook is having a very bad game here. There's seven minutes added on. Salford are beating Newport now. For the large part, autos are done and it looks like we're going to be in the playoffs against Doncaster, which, goodness me, that could end very, very badly. Uh, Matty Platt is going to come on for Jonathan Tompkinson just for the last couple of minutes. He's on a booking, he's tired. Let's just save him for the final game. I mean, I think for the final game, Salford have scored again. Autos are done and MK Dons have scored again. How on earth have we bottled automatic promotion? We've been in that top three for near enough 90% of the campaign and we've thrown it away in these last four league matches. We picked up two points out of our last possible 12 and that's why we now now find ourselves in the playoffs. Well, we might end up facing against Doncaster or Colchester maybe. It looks like Doncaster maybe conceded late. Um, yeah, a couple of late goals against Barrow who are already relegated. Wow, they were 2 0 up with si uh, six or seven minutes left and ended up losing 4 2. Absolutely crazy. We know our season's done. We also know season one is not done for now, and we will have the playoffs in the next episode, which is very frustrating. But unfortunately, we haven't been consistent enough towards the back end of the campaign, and we've now got this match against Newport County. Let's get into it. Here we have it then. Here's how we line up for the second game of today's episode and the final game of the regular League 2 season. We've gone with a lot of changes because we don't want any injuries between now and the playoff starting. In goal, we've got Colin Doyle with a back three of Platt, Kelly and Ryder. You've got Halliday and Odwa as your wing-backs. We've Smallwood, Ward and Poynton in the midfield with Smith and Young leading the line. On the bench, you've got Walker, Swanson, Walsh, Gilead, Patterson, Cook and also Callum Kavanagh as well. Lots of changes for us. I'm hoping they can get the job done today. It doesn't really matter. This is basically a glorified friendly. But if any of the players in the starting eleven, or even the ones that come on off the bench for Bradford City play very well, they might just about play themselves into contention for our playoff campaign because we're coming into it on horrendous form and no one wants to go into the playoffs on horrendous form. If we don't get promoted this season, which sounds crazy to say considering the position we're in just last episode, then my aim for next season is to win the league and that is a great start. Brad Halliday, who hasn't been particularly performing very well recently, gets another assist. I think that's his eighth league assist of the season, 11 in all competitions. A great ball in there and a nice header from Jake Young, who's only scored his third goal of the season there. He's had a really Really, really underwhelming season. It's a good ball in from Halliday. A nice header from Jake Young. We take an early lead inside about 75 seconds there. I didn't even have time to encourage the players. We've got another corner here. Bobby pointing to take. Maybe if we absolutely batter Newport here, which it looks like we're going to do. We're 2-0 up inside five minutes. Maybe I need to play this team in the playoffs. Maybe Doyle deserves a start. Rydow gets centre-back. Smallwood's back in the team. Poynton's getting the nod. Even Tyler Smith has found himself in a starting 11 today. Great ball in there from Bobby Poynton. And a nice header from Kieron Kelly who, to be fair, has played quite a lot of football recently because of the injuries to Richard Nate and Sam Stubbs, and he's not been too bad, to be honest with you. I mean... If we go 3-0 up here inside five minutes, that would be absolutely incredible. Rydalk finds Kieron Kelly. We're not going to do it inside five minutes. Can we do it inside six? Pointing now. Plays it back into Matty Platt. Down the line looking for Brad Holiday. A little bit of time. 
And he goes back into Matty Platt, squaring to Kieran Kelly. Liam Rydow now, Smallwood, lovely football from Azia. Smith flipped through to Bobby Poynton, and he gets his sixth goal of the season, but his first in Bradford City colours. He's finally broken his duck. Five and a half minutes on the clock. It's Bradford City 3, Newport County. Now, judging by all the squad numbers as well and the shirt numbers of the Newport players, it looks like a pretty strong team. Poynton, I'm not going to lie to you, I thought he'd put that wide. Thankfully for our sake, though, he's found the back of the net. It's Bradford City 3, Newport County nil with just five minutes on the clock. It's such a shame that it's taken a full team rotation to actually start playing well. The goals have dried up massively, but we are three goals to the good at home in front of our fans. This is exactly the type of result we want to be taking into the playoffs, but it's going to be a pretty much completely different team, to be honest with you. Smith out wide into Brad Halliday. Low ball in. It's a really good ball there. Cleared away by Newport, only as far as Clark Adore, and he finds Richie Small with a little bit of room over the top, looking for point, and looks offside, he's found the back of the net, and is this one going to count? No, it's not, that one is going to be disallowed, it's a hell of a finish to be fair though from point, and 15 minutes in then, still 3-0. Another corner to come for us here, over on that far side, it'll be Ward to swing it into the box, it's not a bad ball, cleared up in the air, Platt lays it off to point, and it will hit one, and Bobby point, and will find the back of the net, when the pressure is off, point, and he's coming into his own, two goals on the final day, of the regular season for Bobby Point and the Bradford City boyhood fan with a brilliant strike there to find the back of the net. It's two in one for Point and it's a brilliant strike into the top corner. Very similar to the goal he actually scored against Newport to be fair in real life on the final day of the season. Second phase of a set play on the edge of the box finds the top corner but we're 4-0 up here. I mean I know Newport are poor. They've not, not got really much to play for but I would still expect them to put in a better showing than what they currently are doing. Will Dig lays it off for, for Morris. Ball through there and they've hit the post. Surely offside there. Lino says no and we'll have a throw in. Throwing for us over on at that far side. A door plays a 1-2 with Ward and back into Smallwood. Rydow swings one in. Point and squares it for Smith who's got to score and he does. The Lino keeps his flag down. It's 5-0 to Bradford City. What on earth is going on? I think genuinely it is only fair that I play this team in the playoffs. I don't care how bad Newport are. We are playing absolutely brilliantly. It's a great ball in from Rydaug and the IQ from Poynton to flick that across goal. Not even Tyler Smith is missing from that angle. It's Bradford City 5, Newport County nil, and now every player apart from Smallwood is having a good game. Poynton is on a 9.9. .9. He is producing an absolute masterclass so far in today's game and fingers crossed it's for me continues into the playoffs and the same for every one of these players because they're performing brilliantly in this game the challenge to them is can you get double figures can you keep a clean sheet let's see how we finish this game Halliday now finds Bobby Poynton down the line into Tyler Smith poor first touch as you would probably expect with Tyler Smith but anyway Newport have the ball back once more it's a mistake though from Morrison Jake Young is going to strike good save though in the end from Johnny Mack said oh well apparently that was going to go out for a goal kick there I thought that was quite clearly a corner it looked like a pretty decent save there from Johnny Max dead but approaching at half time five goals to the good Newport have not really offered much so far in today's game we scored five goals but we've only created not even two xg so far free kick here then for Newport it looks like it'll be a right footed in swing a one man in the wall for Bradford City just before the half time whistle will be wait to put the ball into the box he swings it in towards that back post free header comes in and Colin Doyle with his popper down wrist can't keep it out and uh, unfortunately we won't be keeping a clean sheet Newport are back in this game it's a really good ball into the box to be fair Ray at the back post gets the header in Doyle should definitely save it and unfortunately it's found the back of the net so that'll see us go into half time then 5-1 up Unless something happens now, Ward has given the ball away. We are really crumbling here. We've gone five nil up, and we've suddenly decided that yeah, job's done. We're just going to stop trying now. We've got the playoffs in a couple of days, lads. If you'd like to switch on, that'd be much appreciated. Wait now into the penalty area, and it's a hell of a finish to be fair. James Wait curls one into the bottom corner, and at five nil, it looked very comfortable. They've got two goals back late in the first half. It's now going to be. A nervy finish. I mean, not that the result matters at all, but when you're 5-0 up, you don't then want to throw it away just a couple of days before the playoffs, a second team or not. Could the keeper do better with that? Potentially. Maybe I'm being a little bit harsh on him there. The first half just seems to never be ending, doesn't it? It's probably the longest first half I've ever had on camera. Morris now sends it long. Rydow should be able to cut that one out, though, and he finds Richie Smallwood. Ball through into Tyler Smith. Back to Matty Platt. Out wide to Brad Halliday. 
Low bit of space and he cuts back in for Matty Platt. On this near side, he goes into Smallwood. Point and now picks it up, lays it off for Kelly. It's a short layoff. It's come back to him. Point and through for Smith. Oh, what a goal. That's an absolutely outstanding strike from Tyler Smith. It's a brilliant ball through from Bobby Poynton, who's got two goals and two assists so far in today's game. They has got a couple of quick early goals there, and we thought, oh, is this game going to be some late drama? It finishes 5-5, but that, get, that goal should hopefully put this game to no doubt. Bradford City 6, Newport County 2. They are getting absolutely pumped. Conceding six goals in the first half is crazy. Can we have the halftime whistle? We can finally. I'm going to catch my breath because that was an absolutely hectic first half. Eight goals. You all know what's going to happen in the second half. Nothing's going to happen. Let's get underway then for the second half. Bobby Poynton playing a 10 out of 10 rating in that first half. Will Evans and Harry Charlesley have come on for Newport. I'm surprised after conceding six goals they've not made more defensive changes, to be honest with you. Maybe these are all the defenders they've got and they've got no more other options for them. Newport coming forward here at the start of the second half. Not really what you want to see. You know, I would like a nice little reducing tackle. Not a red card tackle, but a reducing tackle. Ball into the box here towards the back post, cleared away by Kelly. And now it's Wildig over to Fakai. Ball into the box, looking for Charlesley. And Newport have scored very early in this second half. 60 seconds on the clock. It's Bradford City 6, Newport County 3. I should have maybe made that a bit more clear. Six seconds into the second half, should I say. And it's Bradford City 6, Newport County 3. What an absolutely mental game this is. Goal kick here, which Colin Doyle will send long. Nice hold-up play there from Jake Young. And now Rydal got finds at Smallwood, who has picked up a yellow card. Poor pass there from Kieron Kelly. And now Newport coming forward with the ball. Good tackle. Good tackle there from Charlie Ward. If I can uh, speak some English pain now. Over on this near side. Ball into the box towards that back post. Header comes in. And Newport have hit the crossbar. I thought they were going to make it the 10th goal of this game. Thankfully for our sake. It's Cannon back off the upright. And now we are coming forward on the counter. Smith. A little bit of room and he goes out wide into Clark Adore. Not particularly having a great game so far. Can he get a ball into the box? He can't. Fails to do so. And normally make my subs after about an hour, but considering we're keeping players fresh and we want to get the fringe players as many minutes as possible heading into the playoffs, I'm not going to make any changes as of right now. Brad Howard there, there with a nice interception. Can he get a ball into the box? He's tackled by Will Evans, who looks like he's playing in left wing back. I never understand why Newport play him there. He's not a left wing back. He's a striker. Don't get it personally. Smallwood's going to end up getting sent off here, isn't it? Someone's going to get a red card in this game, 100%. Smith now driving forward the ball. Low ball in. And Newport have scored again. This game is absolutely mental. It's Bradford City 6, Newport County 4. Harry Charlesley on off the bench at halftime. Finds the back of the net with a low strike at Colin Doyle's near post. I know at 5-0 up, I was saying, yeah, I'm going to... Play these players in the playoffs and it'll be absolutely no no problem. Uh, we have conceded four goals at home. We've nearly con we've we've conceded five goals at home. We're actually going to bottle a five nil lead, aren't we? What on earth is going on? We were five nil up. It's now six five. Goodness me, what is happening? It seems every time they come forward, they're going to score. I mean, is this the Liam Rydalg effect? I mean, what, why is Clark Adore on the front post? And how's that ball ended up going going through Clark Adore to find the back of the net? What on earth is going on? I mean, they've changed formation, to be fair. Maybe we need to change formation, go a little bit more defensive. Gilead is going to come on for Jake Young, and we're going to go to a just very, very defensive formation. We'll go a little bit more defensive in here. We'll put, actually, Ward up here. We'll play with the box. Don't mind playing with the box. And we'll put Ward as a playmaker. Smallwood, can you do anything? They're both really ball winners, to be honest. There's not really much else I can do. Uh, in terms of other changes, we're going to bring on Swanson for Clark Adore over on that left-hand side. And we'll leave it like that for now. Don't want to make too many changes because obviously Swanson and Gilead are probably going to play in the playoffs. I don't specifically know off the top of my head when the playoffs are, but I do want to keep as many players fresh as possible. We will wait for this heart to finish and we'll make our final three changes of the game. Gilead finds Smallwood in that midfield. Down the line into Swanson. A little bit of room here. He goes back into Smallwood. Lays it off for Liam Rydog. Stepping in with the ball. Out wide to Brad Halliday. Beats his man. That's a good tackle to be fair. And now Halliday picks it up again. Low ball in. And that is going to be a spot kick for Bradford City. Who's going to take it though? Will it be Tyler Smith? It will be. He steps up. Sends the keeper the wrong way. It's Bradford City 7. Newport County 5. I think that's a hat trick for Tyler Smith in this one. And he's probably played himself to be on the bench in the playoffs now. Cassidy, Kavanagh not really been performing recently. Jake Young hasn't really performed all season. And it's 7-5 to the Bantams. It's not a game of five aside. This is a game of 11 aside football. And it's 7-5 to Bradford City. We're going to play 
Alex Patterson as a Segundo Volante. We're also going to get Callum Kavanagh on for Charlie Ward as the attacking midfielder. And Walsh is also going to come on for Matty Platt, who's tired and we don't want to end up seeing him get sent off because he has also picked up a yellow card. Omar Bogle on the corner there and they've hit the crossbar. This might genuinely be the most goals we've ever seen in a YouTube episode that I've done. 12? Have, have I ever... Have we ever seen more than 12 goals? Obviously not including a friendly against the dog and duck, but what an absolutely exhilarating game. And it's a great confidence booster to know you can score seven goals in a game going into the playoffs, but it's also a massive confidence shooter knowing you've just conceded five at home to a mid-table side. I'm not really too sure what to make of that game. Pointing got a 10. I think that's a really good sign, but we've got the playoffs tomorrow, all being well, and... Who are we going to be facing against? We're going to be facing against Colchester. I mean, look at the goal difference. Colchester had positive 28 goal difference. The second best in the division. Third best in the division. Doncaster snuck into the playoffs on minus two goal difference. What on earth's gone on there? But anyway, I'm going to leave it there then for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try and hit... Wow. I was going to say, go through the likes there. We'll come to that in a moment. Bobby Point in two goals and three assists. Five goal contributions in a single match. What an absolutely outstanding performance that is from Bobby Point. And now his stats look much better, don't they? As I was just saying, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could channel it 20 likes, as I said at the start of today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Smallwood is going to miss both the playoff matches because he's got 10 yellow cards. Brilliant. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 2,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already, with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so, and it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below. Sam Stubbs is considering his options. That's not ideal. I wanted him to stay around. I should have already offered him a new contract by now. Uh, well, there's going to be a lot of players leaving. Joe Walsh, I don't mind too much because of his age, but thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you very soon for another one. Peace.